This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to change someone into a solid granite statue. This is an update of a tutorial I did many years ago on a much earlier version of Photoshop. I provided a PSD file that contains two layers, a granite stone texture and a background that we'll place our statue onto. Its link is in my video's description or project files. Feel free to use another background if you like. Before we begin, if you haven't already, click that subscribe button to let you know as soon as I upload new Photoshop tutorials. Open a photo of someone that you'd like to use for this project. I downloaded this one from Shutterstock. If your subject is wearing dark clothing or has dark hair, we would need to lighten those areas to achieve the best results. I'll use this example to walk you through it. First, click the adjustment layer icon and click black and white. Make your subject active and open the quick selection tool. In this case, I prefer this tool over using color range, but feel free to use whatever method you like. Make the quick selection tool size between 5 and 10 pixels and drag it over the inside of the dark hair or clothing. To refine its edges, Go to Select. If you're using a version earlier than CC 2015.5, click Refine Edge. If you're using a later version, click Select and Mask. If you prefer to use Refine Edge, shift click Select and Mask. I did in-depth tutorials on both of these filters, so if you'd like to watch them, I provided their links as well. Click Smart Radius. This detects smooth and hard edges. To adjust the size of your brush, make sure the caps lock key is off and press the right or left bracket key on your keyboard. Brush along the edge of soft or feathery areas. Output it to a new layer with layer mask. Make the bottom layer visible and click the adjustment layer icon. This time, click Levels. This will lighten the areas that are made visible through the layer mask. Since adjustment layers affect all of the layers beneath them in the layers panel, we'll need to clip this adjustment layer to affect just the one layer beneath it. Click the clipping mask icon or go to layer and create clipping mask. If the properties panel is partially hidden, just drag it down. I'll drag the input midtones to 2.10 and the input highlights to 191. I'll drag the output black level to 63. Since every photo has its own amount of brightness and contrast, feel free to adjust these amounts. Make the top adjustment layer active and shift click the bottom layer to make all of the layers active. Press Ctrl or Command E to merge them together. If your subject doesn't have dark hair or dark clothing like this one, we'll go to the next step. Make a copy by pressing Ctrl or Command J. We'll separate the entire subject from its background by making a selection around the subject. Let's use the Quick Selection tool again. To remove areas of the selection, press and hold Alt or Option as you drag over those areas. Click the Layer Mask icon to make a layer mask next to the top subject. Hide the bottom subject and make the top subject active. Remove all its color by pressing Ctrl or Command Shift U. Next, we'll remove the eyes, irises, and pupils since most granite stone statues don't have them. Press Z to open your zoom tool and drag it over the eyes. Open the eyedropper tool and click inside the eye but just outside the iris to pick up that shade of gray. Press B to open your brush tool, reduce its size, and brush over the inside of the eye. Press I to open back the eyedropper tool and click above it to pick up that shade. Press B to open back the brush tool, reduce its opacity to about 40%, and brush over the top of the inside of the eye. We'll blend it more by opening the blur tool and making its strength anywhere between 20 to 30%. Repeat these steps with the other eye.
zoom back out by pressing Ctrl or Command and the minus key a few times, or press Ctrl or Command 0 to fill your canvas with it. Next, we'll create a displacement map of our subject, which we'll use to make the granite texture wrap itself around the subject's contours. First, we'll duplicate the cutout subject by clicking the icon at the upper right and clicking Duplicate Layer. Open the Document List and click New. Type in Displacement and click OK. It immediately created a new document of the same name. Since displacement maps look best when they're blurred, go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 3 pixels, then click OK or press Enter or Return. Go to File, and Save As. Save it to your desktop for quick access, as a Photoshop PSD document. Then click Save. If you see this message, just click OK. Click the tab of your cutout subject. Press V to open your Move tool and drag your subject onto the tab of the granite texture and background. Without releasing your mouse or pen, press and hold the Shift key as you drag your subject down and release. Holding Shift kept it centered over the background. Make the granite texture active and drag it to the top of the Layers panel. We'll convert the texture into a smart object so we can modify it non-destructively. To do this, click the icon at the upper right and click Convert to Smart Object. Go to Filter, Distort, and Displace. Make the horizontal and vertical scales 5, stretch to fit, and repeat edge pixels. Click the Displacement PSD file you saved to your desktop earlier and click Open. As I toggle back and forth, you can see how the granite texture displaced itself horizontally and vertically based on the tonal values of our blurred subject. Change the Blend Mode to Multiply. To confine the granite texture to just our subject, go to the Layer Mask. We'll make a copy of it and drag it next to the granite texture. To do this, press and hold Alt or Option as we drag it up next to the texture. Next, we'll brighten our entire image by clicking the Adjustment Layer icon and clicking Levels. Make the input highlights 175. To add dimension to the circumference of our subject, we'll add a soft, darker shade surrounding it. Double click the subject layer to open its layer style window. Click Inner Glow and click this box to open the color picker. Pick Black and click OK. Change the Blend Mode to Soft Light and make its opacity 100%. The technique is softer and the source is edge. The choke is zero and the size is 30 pixels. The contour is linear and the range is 50%. Next, we'll add a shadow of the statue onto the background. We'll make a new layer below the active layer by control clicking or command clicking the new layer icon. Control click or command click the layer mask to make a selection of its shape. We'll fill the selection with black by pressing Shift plus the F5 key at the top of our keyboard to open the fill window. We can also go to Edit and Fill. Open the Contents list and click Black. Presently, we can't see the black shape because it's behind our statue. But if you look at the layer under our statue layer, you'll see the black shape. Deselect it by pressing Ctrl or Command D. Convert the shadow into a smart object so we can adjust the blur we'll be adding to it at any time. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Blur it 14 pixels. Before we move the shadow, let's examine the shadows on our statue. In this example, the shadows are positioned down and to the right, which means its light source is located up and to the left. With your Move tool still active, Drag the shadow down and over so it's positioned at the same angle as the shadows in your statue. 
Next, we'll distort the shadow so it looks as if the wall itself is keystoned at an angle. We don't have to do this, but I find that distorting the shadow makes our overall image more interesting to look at. Go to Edit, Transform, and Distort. If you see this message, it's just letting us know that the blur will be temporarily turned off while we use the Transform tool. Click OK. Go to the top corner and drag it down to distort the shadow. Then press Enter or Return. Reduce its opacity to 70%. I think I'd like to brighten my overall image more, so I'll make the Levels Adjustment layer active and drag the input highlights more to the left. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.